Hey guys and welcome to another Vertica tutorial. We're gonna see how we can back up an object, a database, uh, whatever thing from Vertica and send it straight to an AWS S3 bucket. So this is the configuration we we have. So we have as a restore point as one, the object and the restore mode is gonna be create or replace. But the important thing here is this in the mapping in storage you want to have your objects on the same server so I don't I want all the nodes to send the data to a single location that is important otherwise you don't want the backups to be scattered on multiple nodes so this is going to be my executable that's going to run that script so pretty much what we talked in the previous uh, tutorial if you guys saw it with me where we have an initiator and then the backup command we switch to the to the directory where the backup is created we create a parameter called date then we tar the the content of that uh, particular directory and then we zip it and and then sequentially we send that particular zipped file to our database um, backup bucket in this case is going to be a, a bucket called vbr underscore bkps uh, if you guys don't have the Amazon client EC2 installed on your machine, you can follow another tutorial. I put a description in the, in, I put the link in the description. So as you can see, we already have it installed. <coughs> in my case, it's pretty easy to install. Uh, it's pretty easy to have an AWS account as well. Uh, next, what we're going to do, we're going to see, and we're going to try to create a bucket, a bucket called VBRB. BKP. So uh, I'll see. Okay, we get an error here. Yeah, probably I should not use the prefix. So let's try it again. So the to create a new bucket uh, command it's uh, AWS S3 and the option MB followed by the new bucket name. All right, again, we're getting the same error. So just one second. Yes. So the error is because we can't use uppercase letters in the bucket name. All right, so we can list the bucket and we can see there's the bucket currently holds no content. All right, we're back in our working directory where we have our script. So let's go and run line by line the content of our script so first so this is the entire script right so first what we're going to do we're going to copy and we're going to initiate the backup location so keep in mind the backup location is going to have to be in a single server server in our case in the server we're working on so the backup has been initiated and uh if we if you remember this one will create a manifest file. So let's jump into it and we see the test VBR and the backup manifest has been already created. Great, let's jump to the next step and run the backup itself. Uh, this backup is gonna back up a single object which is a dummy object that we have created in the database. <clears throat> Sorry. So as you can see, he found the, the, the back. He found the object, and now he's backing it up. The backup of the object is pretty easy um, and fast. Now it also depends on the size of your object. All right. So backup. It's almost complete and uh, now we get the flag that the backup is complete so we can see the content of the, our backups as you can see all the snapshots for all three nodes have been brought to a single location if we would have to split it up they would belong to each of their own nodes so you can see we have 1.2 gigabytes of space usage now we're going to jump into the location of the backup directory Oops, small typo there. So, yeah, the backup location should be this one. We're going to jump into it and we're going to run a tar command. 
uh, appending the date that we run it. So the date it's uh, pretty simple. It's gonna give us a year, month, and day, as you can see here. And now we're gonna take that tar file and we're gonna gzip it so we can make it smaller. We don't want to occupy a lot of space in AWS, and in the same time, we don't want to actually take a lot of band network bandwidth when we transfer it over the network to the AWS S3 bucket. So this depending on your machine size and depending on the size of the file this might take some time and this is CPU intensive just to let you guys know you don't want to have a bunch of gzip commands running in the same time this will affect the performance of your system depending on when you're running it all right all right so we done so let's see from 1.2 we dropped to 80 to 800 megs all right great now let's run the aws s3 move command so this command will pretty much will not copy to the location but will effectively move the file so we're no longer going to have it on the local host so as you can see If you have multiple files, you should use option recursive and point to that directory. If you, let's say you have multiple uh, backup files. All right, so right now we get an acknowledgement that the file was moved. We can see that it's no longer on the local system. And if we query the bucket on AWS, we can see that the object is already there great so running it one by one it worked perfectly what we're going to do next we are going to run it all in a single piece so what is this going to do is going to run sequentially based on whatever it's in our in our execute um, backup script so we're going to remove everything from the test backup uh, location we're going to go back to our scripts and uh, we're gonna run single script in a single line of code. So we're just gonna take the run test VBR to S3 underscore SH and run it in a single go. This should take a backup of our object, initialize the backup location, and then zip the content of the backup and move the backup to s3 so this can be easily put up put on on a on a cron top job or any job schedule you have and have it run nightly or weekly or monthly whatever you want it to run and keep your backup secure in aws and then in AWS, you can have a purge. Um, you can have a purge um, rule that will maintain those backups based on your requirements and needs. So right now, the 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 zipping of and tarring the tar and the zip is taking probably the longest in this um, in this um, script. But even though we can see, it's not that slow. And like I mentioned, it all depends on the size of your machine and the size of your network bandwidth, how long is this might take. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. As you can see, the backup was created and transferred to AWS. And uh, like and subscribe, comment if you guys want anything new. I see you in the next tutorial.